My name is Kim Akia, and this is Book That Commercial. Please like us on Facebook at Book That Commercial. Please follow us on Instagram at Book That Commercial, and head over to our website, www.bookthatcommercial.com. So today, I want to talk about contracts. Yes, I love me a contract. When I see a contract with my name, and I see uh, some dollar signs on there, I'm like, Come on, bring me coins. Bring me the coins. I'm going to bring you this talent, and I'm going to get them coins. So I love me a contract. So this is actually a two-part series. Part one, this video, I'm going to talk about SAG after commercials contract. And then part two, in the next video, I'm going to talk about non-union contracts and talent releases. So this is going to be a really short video. I just want to give you a quick overview of the SAG-AFTRA commercial televisions contract and um, just basically just run through it and show you the different sections, how you fill it out, and let's go. All right. So first off, I have a SAG-AFTRA commercials contract right here. This is from when I booked uh, the IBM commercial in the fall of 2018. I booked a SAG-AFTRA commercial. It was for IBM. And this is the commercials contract that they sent me. Um, this is a standard SAG employment contract. So whether you get hired for voiceover or on camera in a SAG-AFTRA commercial, this is the basic contract that you will get sent. Okay. Now, for confidentiality purposes and for privacy purposes, I have blacked out the areas um, of the uh, ad agency's name and the producer's name just for you know this is just for learning purposes so so that's why you see the blackouts okay so let's just run through it really quickly so here it is all right all right so let's go through it all right so the name of this contract is the standard sag employment contract for television commercials principal roles so if you get one of these contracts, congratulations, you are a principal on camera or off camera on a SAG after commercial. That's awesome. Congratulations. So at the top, there is a job number. You don't need to worry about that unless they give it to you. That's more for internal purposes. Uh, at the top here, you'll see, oh, sorry. Please return to, this is usually the producer, the talent coordinator, um, the person who is in charge of the production. That's who this is going to go to or the person who's handling talent payment. Then at the top, you have your date, work from, work time, meals, travel to location, travel from location, makeup fitting, performance, performers initials. So the date or dates that you've worked, you want to enter that here. Uh, the time you came to set, the time you had your meals. Uh, if you had to travel to and from location, put all that here. Keep track of all that. Make sure you keep track of all that because if you go over your uh, designated time, you do get paid extra money um, per the SAC contract. And then you want to um, initial it, you know, just to let them know that, yes, you agree. This is the correct time. This is correct. Okay, then down here, uh, multiple track multiple tracking did occur sweet number of tracks that's for voiceover so if you are hired as a voiceover person off camera then that would apply to you okay um performers signature initials i will put that here between the producer puts her name here producer and kim kia performer me okay the commercial code now the commercial code or iski code is the code that's assigned to that specific commercial and again that's more for like internal use like for people that are uh, paying on that commercial or like when the ad agency creates the commercial in their system it's a system thing just to keep track this commercial goes with this number okay um, you might not know that don't even worry about it the commercial title they put that in there for me um, tags and demos that's for voiceover work so if you did tags on a voiceover spot or did some demos you would put the number one two three four whatever such commercials are to be produced by the ad agency's name goes here okay the ad agency's address is here okay um, acting as an agent for who's the advertiser. The advertiser in my case was IBM. So IBM name, IBM's name went there. Uh, the product, it's a brand, so that goes there. And then the city and the state. We shot this in New York City. Okay, so then come down here, compensation scale. 
okay? So they paid me scale for this commercial, but I didn't really get paid scale for the commercial. I got paid a non-union buyout. So this is what I think. Oh, I'm trying to recall this commercial because I got paid a huge lump sum of money like it was a non-union buyout. But then they asked me to do the voiceover. And then in the end, I wound up just being the principal on camera in the spot. And they went with another voiceover person. But I just can't remember. I think that they included that in the huge lump sum that they gave me because I definitely got paid way more than scale on this project. Again, this project, I initially went into it as a non-union buyout and it was a lot of money. Um, and then when I got in there, they're like, oh, it's it's going to be a sad commercial. So I said, oh, well, that's even better for me because then I can get residuals um, on this. But then I'm not really sure what happened. I wound up getting a, a large lump sum of money um, because it wound up, I think they wound up just putting it on the internet only and new media and their website and stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to, I'll do a story time and recall that. But anyway, let me get back to this contract. Okay, so anyway, your compensation goes here. Now, are you a principal performer, stunt performer, a dancer, a singer, or is it a group of you, you know? So you would check off what you are, your character voice. You would check off what you are doing in this commercial. Classification, are you on camera or off camera? I was on camera, so that is clicked, okay? Part to be played, you can also write in what part you're gonna, be, you're gonna play. Um, furnished by the performer, number of costumes. So this right here, I didn't furnish any of my costumes. Wardrobe was all completely provided by IBM and the ad agency. So I didn't need to worry about this. But if you are bringing your own costume and wardrobe, then you would definitely put that in there because you get reimbursed. Um, if you're going to be filming this at nighttime, SAG gives you money for that too. So there's nighttime pay as well. If there's smoke involved, then you get paid for smoke as well. That's what I said. It's really good to just glance over the SAG commercials contract because you get to really like see, you know, all the different provisions and the rules that apply to commercials. Commercials are very, very layered. It's very, the contract is very deep. I mean, you put the name, all notices are to the producer. The producer's address is here. Her address was here. Her name is here. And if you want all of your money to go to you, then you're going to check off here. You send all my money to the performer at the performer's address, the performer's email address, the city, state, and everything. If you want all of your money to go to your agent or your manager, then you're going to click off to performer, care of, agent's re agent or representative, agent's address, the agent's city, agent's phones, and state and email and all that kind of stuff. So this is just the basic SAG after a commercials contract when you receive that contract you're also going to receive a w4 okay which everybody knows what that is that's where you put in your number of allowances every time you're hired for a job anytime you're hired as an employee somewhere you get sent a w4 for tax purposes and also there are certain states that whenever you get hired for a new excuse me for a new job they have to send you an addendum that shows you the wage amount Okay, New York State is one of those states that require um, uh, an actual addendum of the rate of pay. So you will receive this along with your SAC contract if you are working in New York. Okay, and basically, this is the New York State Wage Theft Prevention Act. I'm sure. In California, you're going to definitely get this when you get your SAG after contract. It says New York State requires that all employees be given notice of their rate of pay, wage status, and payday at the time of hire. Okay, your rate of pay is disclosed in the chart below based upon the selections made on page one of the Exhibit A1 Standard Employment Contract for Television Commercials, which is this. Okay, your SAG after com commercials contract. Additional responsibilities or time added to your employment during the shoot will be calculated at the contractual rate set forth below. Okay, so here we go. Performer category, principal, eight-hour session. Per SAG after commercials contract, you are to be paid $671.69 for a eight-hour session. If you're off camera, 
you should be getting paid or you have to get paid at least $505.04 for a two hour off camera session. And then if you are a group singer, here's your rate. If you are a, uh, let's see, non-air solo person, non-air principal, here's your rate. If you're a, a dancer, here's your rate. Okay, here, if you're a group of dancers, here's your rate. If you're working overtime, you get one and a half times hourly rate for ninth and tenth hour, two times hourly rate for eleventh, and da 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 da, on and on and on. If you work Saturday and Sunday, there's more money added into your uh, compensation. If you work a holiday, there's more money. So this is really good. This gives you just a snapshot of um, how much you get paid um, as an on-camera, off-camera commercials performer. So I hope that helped you in some way. If you're interested in learning more about the sag after commercials contract, you can find it on my website, bookthatcommercial.com. You can download it for free. I also have the newly negotiated addendum up there as well. You can download that for free and just peruse through it and skim through and just keep it. Keep it. Uh, you can download it and keep it and, you know, have it to refer back to from time to time. Or if you need to look into something, it's there for you. So I think it's good for every actor to just take a glance at it. I mean, you're not going to memorize the whole thing. I mean, there's so much in there. There's just levels to it. But it's good to just get an idea of, like, what's really going on with, with uh, commercials and stuff like that. So with that being said, thank you so much. I hope that this... Uh, video was helpful to you in some way don't forget to like us on facebook follow us on instagram at book that commercial facebook book that commercial head over to the website book that commercial.com and i hope that you book that commercial all right and stay tuned for video number two in which i talk about non-union commercial contracts and talent releases okay so that's the next video all right bye